You are on the Dirty Files channel. Welcome to our 38th file. Our first case concerns the tragic murders of the Browning family. Nicholas Browning, a seemingly well-rounded 15-year-old honors student and active community member, shockingly murdered his entire family in their sleep in Cockeysville, Maryland. Although he was interested in sports and scouting and was known as a good kid, law enforcement and investigators labeled him a cold-blooded killer. In our second file, Dr. A respected child and adult psychiatrist, Caroline E. Kong was tragically murdered by her former patient, Christopher Frick, in her home in Hawkinson, Delaware. Despite his successful career and plans to spend more time with his family, his life ended brutally on October 14, 2015. Nicholas Browning behind bars for murdering his family when he was 15 years old. Nicholas Browning was 15 years old when he murdered his parents, John and Tamara Browning, and his two younger brothers, Gregory and Benjamin, as they slept inside their home in Cockeysville, Maryland. According to the Cockeysville community, Nicholas, a sophomore and honors student at Dulaney High School, appeared to be an all-around good kid. He was also very active. The Houston Chronicle reported that he played varsity golf and lacrosse, all while being a Boy Scout who had just completed a prayer garden at his church as a requirement for becoming an Eagle Scout. Nicholas may have portrayed the good boy image, but law enforcement officers and investigators pegged him as a stone-cold killer. And psychiatrist Neil Blumberg testified that Nicholas suffered from dissociative disorder and alcohol abuse. This was a deeply disturbed young man in a deeply disturbed family in which a gun was available and a tragedy happened. Just shortly before 5 a.m. on Feb. 2, 2008, officers with the Baltimore County Police Department were dispatched to a home in the 2900 block of Powers Avenue after receiving a 911 call from Nicholas. The teen told dispatchers that when he entered the house, he found his father unconscious and not breathing on the couch. He also said his dad had blood emitting from his nose. When officers arrived on the scene, they found the Browning family dead. Nicholas' father, John, 45, was a prominent real estate attorney at a Towson law firm, and his mother, Tamara, 44, was a stay-at-home mom. His brothers, Gregory, 14, and 11-year-old Benjamin Browning were students at Cockeysville Middle School. CBS News reported that the Browning family had been shot in the head. There was no sign of a physical confrontation in the home, which led investigators to conjecture that they had been killed while they were sleeping. Initially, Nicholas denied having anything to do with his family's murder, averring that he was at a friend's house the previous night. When he returned home, he found them dead. He said their deaths were the result of a botched robbery, the Washington Examiner reported. When investigators noticed inconsistencies in Nicholas's story, they transported him to the police station for further questioning. After being interrogated for six hours, Nicholas confessed to murdering his family. In a videotaped confession, Nicholas told investigators that in the early morning hours of February 2, 2008, he grabbed his father's gun and shot him in the head while he was asleep on the couch. I just realized I couldn't just walk away from that. And then I shot my mom in her upstairs bedroom, he said. Nicholas then went to his brother's bedrooms and shot them, but he said he shot Benjamin a second time because he began to move. He then fled to a nearby street and tossed the murder weapon in a bush before going to a friend's house, where he spent most of the day playing video games. At around 5 p.m., his friend's mother drove him home. He exited the vehicle and went inside his home, but ran back outside and stated that his father was dead. WBAL-TV reported. He then called 911. Investigators asked Nicholas why he would kill his family, and he said it was to collect the inheritance money. Several months before the murders, investigators ascertained that while Nicholas told two other teens on the school bus that he had grown weary of his father telling him what to do, and he wanted to kill him. WBOC reported that police spokesman Bill Tuhey affirmed that a disagreement between Nicholas and his father is what led to the killing. A county prosecutor stated that Nicholas did everything as if he were a professional hitman, and he showed no remorse for killing his family. While in court, Nicholas apologized to his extended family. He said, I'm so sorry. Words can't describe what I did. I would give my own life. At around 1 a.m. on FEMI Year 3, 2008, Nicholas was arrested at the Baltimore County Police Department. He was booked into the Baltimore County Detention Center in Towson, where he was kept in a secluded section for juveniles. Nicholas was charged as an adult with four counts of first-degree murder. 
The following day, Nicholas attended a court hearing where a judge denied his bond. Prosecutor Robin Coffin said, This crime was so heinous that Nicholas Browning should never get out of jail. After pleading guilty to the charges in January 2009, Baltimore County Circuit. Judge Thomas J. Bollinger sentenced Nicholas to four life terms for murdering his parents and two younger brothers. He will be eligible for parole after serving 23 years with good behavior. Judge Bollinger ordered that Nicholas be committed to the Patuxent Institution, a maximum security psychiatric facility with a program for youthful offenders. It was reported that the judge wasn't swayed by any of the explanations of his motive for killing the Browning family. Christopher Frick behind bars for the home invasion murder of his former psychiatrist, Dr. Caroline Ekong. Christopher Frick is behind bars for murdering his former psychiatrist, Dr. Caroline Ekong, at her home in Hawkinson, Delaware. Ekong, 55, was raised in Nigeria, where she obtained her medical degree from the University College Hospital, University of Ibadan, according to 6 ABC Action News. In 1988, she moved to the United States and continued her medical education and training in Delaware. She then became a double board certified child and adult psychiatrist and began working at the Rockford Center, a 118 bed private psychiatric facility in Stanton, where she supposedly began treating Frick. After getting married and having children, it was reported that Ekong wanted to spend less time at work and more time with her family, but her plans would never come to fruition. On Octasir 14, 2015, Ekong was found dead. Her daughter returned to their two-story home on Withers Way in the Sanford Ridge neighborhood around 4 a.m. and found Ekong's naked body on the floor. Ekong was laying in a pool of her blood. And an autopsy showed that she died from multiple stab wounds to the body. Her daughter told Delaware Online that she has images in her mind of the cuts on her mother's fingers the funeral home tried to hide with flowers. If small paper cuts can leave an unbearably intense sharp pain, then imagine how an illegal hunting knife would feel. Not just one cut, but several cuts. Several stabs. About 30 minutes after Ekong's body was found, Frick made a 911 call and admitted to murdering his former psychiatrist. In his confession, Frick claimed that in the early morning hours of Octier 14, 2015, he parked his vehicle at a parking lot in the proximity of Ekong's home prior to breaking in through the back door. Once inside, he came face to face with Ekong in the foyer, where he said he confronted her. A struggle ensued before Frick stabbed her multiple times. Frick fled the scene in his vehicle. He drove three miles to his parents' home on Springbrook Lane before he decided to call 911. At the time of the murder, Frick was a 21-year-old senior at the University of Delaware, studying mathematics. NBC Philadelphia reported that three mental health professionals have stated that since the age of four or five, Frick has seen several psychiatrists for a slew of mental disorders, including autism spectrum disorder, psychosis, schizophrenia, and obsessive compulsive disorder. Authorities said Frick became obsessed with Ekong after she had him committed to a psychiatric facility at the age of 18, and he believed that she refused to let him leave. Frick wrote a letter to the News Journal about his experience in the psychiatric facility. He wrote, The staff framed me as suicidal, as well as everyone else I saw the night I was evaluated. In an online review of the facility, Frick wrote a lengthy post. The last sentence reads, The person who imprisoned me was Caroline Ekong, whose ego is so large that she would never be able to admit doing something wrong. According to Delaware Online, there were entries in his journal that indicated that he began plotting Akong's murder for at least a year. To prepare for the attack, he purchased a hunting knife and practiced picking locks. On Octani, 15, 2015, Newcastle County Police arrested Frick. He was charged with murder, first-degree possession of a deadly weapon during the commission of a felony, and a slew of other charges. He was booked into the Howard Young Correctional Institution, where he was held without bond for murder, but was given a $143,000 cash bail for other offenses. Shortly after Frick's arrest, he was taken to the Delaware Psychiatric Center for treatment. Authorities said his mental health has since improved. Despite his mental health issues, Superior Court Judge Ferris Wharton found him competent to enter a plea.
In 2016, Frick pleaded guilty to the charges but mentally ill, which means he will undergo psychiatric treatment while incarcerated. At his sentencing, Frick apologized for killing Ekong. He said he wishes he could take it back, and he wishes everyone affected the best. Frick's mother stated that he is a good person but very mentally ill. She said, We know Christopher is very sorry. The victim's daughter described her mother as a woman of integrity. She said, She was a wife, a daughter, a sister, an aunt, a friend, a godmother, a stepmother, a colleague, and a great medical practitioner. Most importantly to me and my brother, she was and is our mother. In December 2016, a judge sentenced Frick to life in prison with an additional 25 years.